We are smart. We are track yards. We make you go. Go straight to a different YouTube channel, because wait, wait. No, 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 stay, stay. Look, we're here to make you smarter. And and you might not have seen these cool things until here. So stay, stay, guys, and look at our... We've gone to Packard Planet Strip. Look at Packard Fleet with Packard Warship. Packard Warship 1, Packard Warship 2, Packard Warship 3, and Packard Warship 4 in this first picture. Um, they don't have any special names. They just call everything Packard Warship and then the number. Probably. Probably. And I'm Connor Kongs. <laughs> uh, I, I'm Captain Foley. I didn't say that yet. So, anyway, uh, yeah, we're here to talk about the Packlid warships a bit. We saw them in season one, and we talked about them a little bit then. So there's a video on that if you want to go check that out. Um, but there's obviously different components from different uh, alien species yes. on their ships. And in season one, there was a few different designs, which made sense because these are scavengers. They basically, you know, collect what they find and put them together. And they they steal. Yeah. They, they, they attack and steal. They're pretty bad people, actually. <laughs> However, I noticed, well, probably a lot of people did, in the last episode, episode six of season two, which is the, the spy humongous, is that the ships in orbit of the Placklid planet were all pretty homogenous. They all looked the same design. There were no different parts, really. There might have been a few different colors on some of the glowies, but other than that, it looks like now they've got a unified design which still incorporates, obviously, some other ship components. But uh, I just thought it was an odd thing, and we thought we should talk about it a little bit in case you guys didn't notice. Yeah, it was definitely one of those things at the end of Season 1, which was one of the best episodes anyway, just introducing this threat. Packleds, they went from being just tricking you into actually warping in and using these big, almost dry dock-like claws at the bottom and, and these, these grabbers, and they would disassemble you, and it, and it was a fantastic idea. And there was three ships that came in, all very different, all similar aesthetically, but very different piece-wise, with the core pack of warship in the middle, the, the actual original TNG ship. And we've been seeing concept sketches, etc. of them, you know, lots of creativity. So they had all this stuff pre-made. We did see them earlier in the season, uh, this season, fighting Riker. But yes, yeah, so we go to Packard Planet, Homeworld, all the designs are the exact same. I almost might, might be the nicest one so far, the sleekest. But to be homogenous... Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Logically. It could be a good thing if it's incorporated in the story. Like now they, if, because there's maybe some mastermind that's helping them that said, okay, we're going to start pumping out ships like this now. So, I mean, if you have replicator facilities on a, a ship, a ship um, construction facility, they just picked the one that worked the best and went, started pumping those out. Um, but I, I like the idea better of the Packlids having basically the same design, but different components, because I think that makes a lot more sense for their species. Well, well, it's different when you have the Packlids being a brand new threat. They've got five of these, and they're causing chaos. But they have actively said in the season that they are the current most annoying threat to the Federation. They're out doing a lot of damage, a lot of aggression... And so when you start talking 30, 40, 50 ships, either they're all pretty damn different, or at a certain place, a certain point, to maintain the same aesthetic, is it even possible to have that many different designs? I mean, especially since, if you assume the bottom... Because you'd need the components of the dry dock ripping facility the same, roughly, to be able to make sure they've got the same operations. That's already, you're assuming, a good chunk of it. And, and let's probably assume you're going to... Well, they've all got the same pack of primary hull shape at the front and if you assume they want the same warp cap capability otherwise what's the point if one can go six one can go warp nine so already you're saying well three components need to be basically identical and then do you have different classes probably not they just build whatever so you kind of have that sense of well are they smart enough to realize let's make the best design and make more of it they might not be but the person that's in charge might might so that, that's something we might learn who knows now one thing that interests me um, there's obviously the main body of this thing, the lifting body, if you will, <laughs> if it was an airplane, is the upper part of a Dideridex. Now, you can't tell me that the pack lids are destroying Dideridexes left, right, and center enough to get the, a Dideridex hull for each one of their ships. So obviously at some point these are being constructed. One or two I can see, maybe even like one Dideridex can make two of these ships. You just cut the things off, you flip them. You got two, right? Like, how many Romulans are they destroying mm -hmm. or capturing to get these components? I can't see the Romulans just going, okay, <laughs> you know? 
Um, so, I mean, there's that, unless they have access to a Romulan, you know, well, junk facility. Maybe they said, hey, we want to build 37 Valdors now, but we need pieces. Let's sell the, the Derodexes to the lowest common bidder. Hello, Packled, my old friend. No, I, I yeah, it, it's certainly true. And if you look at this top view, which obviously, you, you, yeah, certainly it's a Dederodex top frame, but the neck doesn't exactly feel the same. Obviously, there isn't engine units that high up, so it's already different enough. But the scale of the ship isn't remotely right for that. I mean, well, even if it's a hundred, even if it's a hundred meters off, that then isn't a Dederodex hull. It has to be the exact same scale, and certainly the the head of the original pack of the ship isn't going to be the same scale to fit at the... T you know, so th I don't know if that all... They're not thinking the lines of literal kit bash in this. I don't think that makes any practical sense. I mean, those are bird of prey guns. They're not that size. So already, at a certain point, they're just deciding what they like and build, you know, building it. So I think that, that takes that out of the equation especially. And to be fair, like, this top view, it actually is a rather neat version of it. It's not that kit bashy anymore. Everything's reasonably integrated. I mean, still, 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 stuff is still stuck on, but things are actually kind of integrated in a logical way, whereas the other ones, they've kind of more shoved together. So this might be the natural flagship batch where they've now making fresh stuff. This is the home world, after all, they'd, they'd be primary. This might be the the, the apex predator, you know, of the pack-led fleet. This is the kit bash class. That's what they probably called it. Um, so, I mean... We got some ships here with different components. So we got uh, the Dideridex, obviously, is very plain. Uh, the Bird of Prey gun is very plain. Uh, the, f the front head sh module, um, I can't remember the what's the species of ship for that one. Do you, do you know? Well, it's a Packler ship. It literally was their ship. But but it, but, but, but it's every other ship. I mean, it's, it's, the, it's, it's the great TNG model kit bash, but it was. And it's less actually, it's actually less, slightly less accurate than the one at the show because they had more details when you saw it originally, but it's. It can be. It's it's further away. Yeah, it's fine. This, you know, these things start to me instantly, and I have changed the colors slightly just to match the respective pieces. The Derodex is green, but I gave them that. So yeah, obviously the Derodex primary top, but already you can tell the curve is different of of that top frame. So that's different. But yes, the nacelles are also different slightly. But then you've got those better prey. You've got the Packard ship on the top right of the cannon ships. You've got the Klingon D5 tanker or the Kurok. Tank and that that provides the neck mounted pod things, which is a sure why not? It's a good place to cargo stuff. Why not? And then you've got two version or two views of the well. It it is the Tellarite ship, but it's also been three other ships in Enterprise with just different colors and slightly different side deals. This is the the, the most famous one, and clearly it provides the entire engine module to a T, even to, even to the point of having that top glow detail, which I then turned from its original. I believe it was red into a bright green and it's super faithful i mean they've just they've taken it verbatim i mean you can see the pod on the, on the bottom right i mean it is the same thing to a t so they've the combination of an undersized derodex with an oversized bird of prey with a packed warship with a and with two 200 year old ships of from different quadrant or yeah well maybe in different quadrants as in beta and alpha so uh but you know what it actually works together Stuart. let's be fair it actually kind of comes together well can't wait for a Eagle Moss version or like a, a model, oh model my God. kit of it. I didn't consider that. Oh God. Yeah, yeah, we'll get it for sure. Um, but that being said, like we said in season one, there was it was a slightly different design, and there's even a yeah, there's even a schematic um, on the the main view screen of the Cerritos that shows a lot of the different components. You got the Klingon there. You got you know uh, Ferengi element. Um, so yeah, I mean. And that doesn't even look like the Derodex wings, honestly. <laughs> so hopefully there are other Packwood ships still. I liked the idea that they were all a little bit different. I mean, we got more lower decks coming, obviously, so it'll be interesting to see. But I think they've kind of settled on this design now, unfortunately. Yeah, no, but it's you know I, I do like this new version. It has a certain cohesiveness. Like I said, I do think it's just having that, that sleek Derodex top bay because it's a really nice flow to it. It'd be interesting to see if there's a scene where they're walking through the ship and the corridors change like Klingon Romulan Federation corridor <laughs> as they're walking that would be hilarious absolutely that would be fantastic yeah 
But in the meantime, guys, make sure you comment down below. There is a comment section there where you can talk, talk to each other and to us. So let us know what you thought about this design, if you noticed anything ship-wise that we haven't. Um, like where do the arms come from, the clasping arms? Maybe we missed uh, where those could be coming from. So let us know in the comment section. We love reading them and we love interacting with you guys, which if you really want to interact with us, we have lives every week. So make sure you're subscribed and notified so you get notified when we do that because you can talk to us in real time and actually help generate a conversation. And often you can spark one idea or one question that can generate 20 minutes of, ooh, ah. And so many times these episodes have been you know, broken down to a whole new level because of fan feedback, and that's that's fantastic. So if you join those, then of course, Super Chat, if you can, any amount does help, although obviously higher amounts, higher help. And they go, great, because let you, you know, ask a question directly. And we always read those, 100% of the time. We're very, very keen on that. If you, if you want that interaction, you will get that interaction. We pride ourselves on that. And if you want to join the channel as well via YouTube, that's a monthly thing. It's like Patreon, but on YouTube. And then speaking of Patreon, if you can join the Patreon, that's also great. We do a lot of videos every single week, and I'll just, oh my god, so many a month. If you want to keep us doing that, then you need to support in some way, either like, subscribing, like I said, all those uh, direct financial ways as well. So any and all, thanks in advance, and we'll see you next time. That's right. So until then, I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Kongs. Bye, guys. If you are smart, you will make mm. this go in the comments. Mm. Bye, guys.